Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Produced by Lakeland PBS with host Ray Gildow. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents. For tonight, we have a special program. Every night we are on Currents, it's special, but tonight's really a special program. Two friends of mine, um, to be honest, we're all in some of the same industries, but the title of the program tonight is Women of the Outdoors. And uh, it's something that's near and dear to my heart, and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I want to introduce you to two young ladies who are very active in helping other people get involved in, in the outdoors. A lot of people know them from the fishing trade, but we're also, they are also involved in a lot of other aspects of the, the outdoors and hunting, and they do fishing things and other things. They work with different groups, helping them be exposed to the outdoors, and I think it's a pretty neat deal. To my immediate right is Nancy Kep, and for people in central Minnesota, the Kep name is pretty well known because her uncle is Marv Kep, the Hall of Fame fisherman, the National Hall of Fame fisherman, I believe, and I, for sure the Minnesota Fishing Hall of Fame. And Nancy comes from Glenwood, Minnesota, and she and her husband have a store. What's the, what's the name of the store besides Kep's? Uh, it officially Kep's Glenwood Corner. And it's a very nice store where sometimes people drive off with the pumps and sometimes they drive <laughs> off with the hoses and yeah, break things it, off. It, it happens. <laughs> and uh, to her right is Mandy Urick. And if you watch Lakeland Public Television, if you watch Thursday Night News, you know that Mandy and I do fishing tips and we've been doing that now. Mandy says we've been doing it for four years. Hopefully we've helped some of you learn how to catch a few fish. <laughs> Nancy, let's, let's start with you a little bit. Um, you're not here because your uncle's famous. You're here because <laughs> of the achievements that you have of yourself and I just know from knowing your family how much time you spend helping mm -hmm. other people. You do a great deal of things for kids, uh, wounded warriors, all kinds of things. But talk about a little bit about your background. How did you get involved in the outdoor stuff? Well I grew up in Clithrow um, and we had a resort as growing up so whenever I had a free moment and I had all my chores done then I could take the boat out and go fishing. Was that fishing. on Clithrow Lake? It was actually Spitzer Lake. Okay. Um, so I would just take the boat out and go fishing and probably I think we had that for probably 10 years, 10, 12 years and then my parents decided to build a gas station in Clithrow and so we had that gas station called Kep's there for 27 years they had it um, and so I just I was in the industry, I would go to all the tackle shows and trade shows with my parents. Um, then I got involved with the National Professional Anglers Association because they were doing, at that time, um, events for kids. And so one of my friends said, you should join because they do all these different events with kids and you can put on clinics and, and get involved with the kids because they knew that's what I like to do. So um, I started there and it just kind of evolved into so much more. And not only is your uncle famous, but the Kep name is famous in Minnesota for, because of the Keps in Urbank, which would be your uncle. Correct. Um, which are one of the major suppliers of bait throughout Minnesota. Right. Still to this day. Yep. And uh, how many uncles do you have that are in the business of s in some form or another? Just one now. Just one left yeah. and then Marv. Philip. Yep, and yeah, Marv. And Phil and Marv. Okay. Yep. And you now live in Glenwood, and yep. you have, do you have two boys? Two boys, yep, and Evan's 17 and Ty's 11. And they are both active in the outdoors, I'm guessing. Um, Evan is, Ty, not you, so much. You have one that's into the computer stuff? Yes. Yeah, yep. well that's not. Yep. A, if his friends are fishing, he's all for it. Um, but for me and him to go out, he, he would he would choose to stay home. Okay. <laughs> Evan's the one that wakes me up at 5.30 when I see her leaving at six to say, mom, let's go fishing. Now, Mandy, Mandy has been on our program before, about a few years ago. We don't remember exactly how long ago. But Mandy, talk a little bit about your background. Fairly similar, actually, to Nancy's, which is kind of scary. Uh, I grew up in North Dakota, and we had a little resort on, on Devil's Lake. And so I'm the youngest of six kids, five older brothers, and I loved it. You know, my brothers didn't like it. Uh, it was work for them, and for me it was fun. And every chance I got, I would, you know, somehow wheezing my way into the boat with the clients and they are all about it. I mean, who's going to say no to a six-year-old little girl who's begging to go fishing? So, you know, I did that. Um, 
clean fish, you know, helped with everything. And then the, the lake rose, you know, and we lost our resort because of it, which is, which is fine. But I went into the natural resource field uh, with my education and ultimately with my career. But I was always stuck on that, uh, the fishing side of it. And I did guide professionally for about 10 years on the hunting side out of Starbuck, Minnesota. I actually used to go to Nancy's store and get all my bait for, for fishing. It's crazy how intertwined it is before we were actually really intertwined in the right. industry itself. And what were you guiding? What kind of, what were you, uh, pheasant hunting, duck hunting? Pretty much everything. I had really awesome Kruger Farms that's out of there. I got to travel a lot with some really special, special clients, big name people, uh, South Carolina, turkey hunting, gator hunting around Minnesota. Uh, we did duck hunting, pheasant hunting, deer hunting, and goose hunting. Was that all in addition to your other job? Yeah. So you kind of worked around, because you are a biologist. Correct. And you're uh, with the DNR. Yes. So you did that in addition to your regular job. Yes. Wow, that was pretty. Kept you, it kept you busy, that's yeah, for yes, sure. But as Nancy and, knows, if you like what you do, it's not really a second job, so. And now you live in the Brainerd area. I do, I've and, lived here 11 years now. And um, what's the magazine? that named you one of the 17 most influential women of the outdoors? Wildlife enthusiasts. Wildlife enthusiasts. Congratulations Thanks. on that. Thanks. That's an amazing <laughs> honor. Was that, did you have any idea that was coming? I had absolutely no idea wow. at all. Um, they, they literally contacted me the day that they were publishing it and wow. just, here you go. And I was kind of like, there's some pretty big names on this list from all over the world. So I'm not really sure how, you know, the little North Dakota girl landed on the list, but I'm, I'm very happy to, to be there. That's very impressive. Well, I wanted to tell you that the, uh, it's always been important to me to have women involved in the outdoors. Uh, my grandfather died pretty young on my mother's side. He was 52 years old. And my grandmother actually is the person that taught me how to duck hunt. Nice. And she taught me how to partridge hunt. So I would go duck hunting with my grandmother in Pine River, Minnesota. We'd go out in the dark, and I could never shoot a duck unless it landed on the water <laughs> because she wasn't a good shot, and she knew I didn't know how to shoot. But that always has stuck with me that, you no, know, here's a grandmother that no one would ever dream would be out in a duck blind or walking through the woods partridge hunting with a 20-gauge shotgun. And I, I think it's just always been a part of my understanding that why should it just it's not just not for men to do these sort of things it's for women to do these sort of things also mm -hmm. and you are both very independent and I need to tell the, the the viewers the story about the first time we did a fishing segment Mandy and I together Mandy had this big truck and this big boat and there were a bunch of guys standing along the shore and Nancy you said you've had similar experiences as to do and these guys I could see them talking like but does this gal know what she's doing? You better watch out, she's gonna run over us or something. And she turned around and whipped in and backed that truck in and jumped out and unhooked it. And these guys are going, wow! It's probably better than any of those guys could do. And I have talked to women who are petrified to try to back a boat up because they are always in an area where there's people watching and they don't get an opportunity to go out and kind of practice to do that. And you guys are you don't need help when you're doing that. You've got big boats, you just back them in, you unhook them and tie them up and you've been doing it for so long, it comes natural to you. But mm -hmm. you also are involved in a program that teaches women how to do that sort of thing. Who wants to start out talking about what that program is? I'll let Mandy start because she was the one that I got the phone call from to ask if I wanted to do the event on Lake Minnewaska for walleyes. So I'll let her start. Which, by the way, I was super ecstatic. Uh, <laughs> the bow program, uh, Linda Bylander is the coordinator for it, and it's actually the oldest and largest bow program in North America. We offer almost 150 different opportunities. It can be from kayaking to birding to geocaching to fishing to archery hunting. It's I mean, called bow? Bow, becoming an outdoor woman. B-O-W. Correct. And I think it was three or four years ago, um, Linda came to me and said, hey, would you be interested in, I know you got a wide breadth of a background for natural resources, you hunt and fished for teaching something. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And they didn't expect what we got, which was great. <laughs> the very first session that I did was um, a bass and musky one, and we offered it at Cabela's, and we had room for 60 people. They were thinking maybe 30 people were gonna show up, 90 people showed up. It was wow. standing room only, and it's a two hour course. But what I did differently from the other courses was, it was mandatory that you had to come for the hands-on learning session, 
but then you were immediately paired with a guide and you got to go out and fishing and actually apply those skills that we just talked about. So you're, you're using the tackle, you're, you know, you're using the rods, you're really applying those skills that you just took the time to learn it, and it blew up and all of a sudden we had this waiting list and it was doing all these species and I just finally had to go back to Linda and I was like, we need some help. <laughs> and I'm like, I got a gal in mind. I was like, I'm like, let me give her a call and see if she'd be interested. And Linda didn't know Nancy at the time and was totally like, I trust you. You know, if you think that, you know, this is going to work and obviously it's worked, it's worked out great. So I gave Nancy the call and I was like, hey, I was like, I really need you to pick up this walleye session. What do you think about it? <laughs> she didn't even box. She's like, yep, I got it. So are you still doing that? Are you still involved with that program? Yes. Both of you still are? Mm -hmm. And is it seasonal? Is there a certain time of the year that you offer these courses? Or how do people find out about it? I do mine in June. It's the second week in June is when I've been doing mine. This will be my third year doing it. And you do that in Glenwood? In Glenwood, yep. Um, so the women stay at Peter's Resort, or last year they stayed at Hunt's Resort, two, two res resorts on Minnewaska. Um, and then I do like a Friday night meet and greet and I take them around the lake and I have a little night cruise and then Saturday morning we do training sessions um, just basically about walleyes. You start from the ground and work their way up to about everything from understanding their habitat to basically fishing them. Tackle. Go tackle, the tackle. Yep. what best practices are, different methods, different types of season, what to use for spring, summer, fall. Um, you know, just go through all of that with the women, and then in the afternoons we take them out fishing. So what, what's the range of age that are involved oh. usually? I've had my youngest, I guess, was probably 17. A mother and daughter came last year. And then, and then the oldest is, um, geez, I want to say she was close to 70 this year. Wow. Was I was going to say, I had a gal that she was pushing 80. Wow. wow. And she came to the, the hands-on bass session, and in between coming to the actual guide session, she had fallen and broken her arm in two places. And she came, and oh, she was wow. like, I, you don't think I'm going to miss this, do you? <laughs> so, wow. I mean, oh, wow. but that's, that's the great thing about it. There is no age limit, you know, to get out and, and do these things and learn. New so skills. when do you do your program, Mandy? Whenever I can fit it in. I've, I've done stuff in the spring and I've done stuff in the fall. It just depends on the species and obviously I've got work. I've got 30 plus tournaments a year. We got to squeeze in all our other stuff. <laughs> so mine's limited. Ours are because we're hands on and on the water, but the bow program itself is a full calendar year. There's uh -huh. programs going on year round. And how do people find out about that? Do, can they go to a website with the DNR for the BOW program or how do yep, they absolutely. You can just <coughs> Google it, and there's a whole a calendar on there right now. Facebook page. They have so a, just designated for Minnesota. And how many other women are doing what you two are doing? Are there quite a few around the state doing it, <laughs> or no? The the volunteering or the the actual class, the the classes that you're doing, that you volunteer to teach. I think we're it. I think really? this is it. <laughs> just you two are the main two people doing it. And I'm that. sure that if we had time, we could expand and, and do more of it and, and help them out more. But I mean, it's just like Mandy said, you got 30 tournaments a year. You got, we have jobs, we have and family. And you tournament fish too, don't you? Yes. Yeah. And do you teach the ladies how to back a boat up and that sort of thing at that class or, um, or not so much? I guess I don't personally teach them. I have a slide that kind of shows them how to do it properly, but I don't physically take them out and show them. I just give them pointers like, you know, um, go to a park one day or go someplace where they can practice where it doesn't have to be an actual access. I'm sure if we actually offered a class on it itself, oh. we would have people there definitely. I mean, if you did, a, it would be a good idea actually between backing and running boats. But the difference between a tiller boat and a wheel boat, I'm sure a class would be full. Because oh, yes. <laughs> I know a lot of women that I've talked to are embarrassed to go try to do it in a, at a public landing because they're afraid people are watching and will make fun of them because it takes a while to get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's very interesting. So it's called BOW, B-O-W. Mm -hmm and it can be seen on the website from the DNR. And uh, next spring, I'm guessing you guys, or next summer, we'll be doing a couple classes again. Mm -hmm. what, else, what else are you both involved in? Do you do anything else together that's, well, you, let's talk a little bit about your tournament fishing. You're both tournament fishermen, and Mandy, you said you do about 30 a year? Correct. And how about you, Nancy? Oh, I maybe do six. I got kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> and are they multi-species or um, I know Mandy's focus, I think it does multi-species too, but 
a lot more on the bass side than on walleyes. I'm a lot more on the walleye side. You are. Mm -hmm. And where are, where are you usually doing it? In what area? Um, let's see, <coughs> Otter Tail Lake. I went up to Pakegama this year, did a tournament up there. Uh, Reno, did a tournament on Reno, Minnewaska. And how about you, Mandy? Where do you go? I'm all over the place. I just got back from Canada, so I was up there for uh, seven days. It was a three-day derby, 150 boats. So I could be here around the Midwest, up in Canada, wherever it takes me. Wow, that's a lot of tournaments. and. When you are tournament fishing, are you usually with uh, an amateur or do you take a partner? I normally have a partner. <clears throat> if my son Evan can do it, he's usually my partner. We have a lot of good times in the boat. Um, otherwise, it's just a friend, whoever, whether it's another girl or a, a gentleman. How about you, Mandy? <clears throat> Both. It just depends. I fish four different series, so each series is different. Um, two of them, it's a partner series, so I have I have a partner actually for each one, a different partner for each one of those. But if it's a, you know, MFBA or one of those, then it's a pro-am system where you're you're linked with a co-angler amateur. How many women do you see in these tournaments? Not a lot on my side. No, I don't either. And actually, on the bass side, I've seen it grow tenfold from 10 years ago where I started. Um, the only other gal at that time was, was Janet Parker. Um, she was kind of my inspiration. And she uh, filmed some TV shows with Steve Panaz, and she was actually fishing the bass FLW series as a pro. Um, then I got into it, and I didn't really see anybody else. Um, Michaela Anderson, who's just been a little phenom. I've you know, fished against her since she was in high school, and she is, she's a heck of a stick. but. Clubs have helped. Uh, the high school fishing team is definitely helping. Mm -hmm. On average, though, I maybe see three or four other gals, you know, on the, on a main series circuit. Well, let's just talk about you. You brought up the high school fishing teams. <coughs> That's a really a big movement, isn't it? It's pretty exciting. That's crazy. Uh, and I know you both have been involved with it at some level, haven't you? I, yes. I know Nancy. You're yep. very involved down there. Yep. Let, talk a little bit about it because I'm doing a show later, probably in November, about the uh, Brainerd High School fishing team, but what is it? What's going on there? Well, when I, I guess I didn't really get asked to do it. Um, I just kind of suggested it to our athletic coordinator that we have um, at school. And I said, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And he's like, well, we don't have the funding for you to do this program. He's like, because you're a coach and you need to be making X amount of dollars. And I'm like, I, that's not why I'm here. I'll volunteer my time to start a fishing program in school. So um, it evolved from there. I went to the superintendent. He likes what I do with the kids in the Minocqua program for the fifth graders. So he's like, yep, do whatever you need to do, Nancy, and just send me the stuff. And so we kicked it off, ended up with 22 kids for our first year for the And do you have girls? I, yes, I have one girl. One girl. Yep. <clears throat> so, and, uh, um, that's the fastest growing movement, I think, in high schools oh, after the trap shooting yes. teams. Yeah. Uh, I think Brainerd has the second largest fishing team. Brainerd's is I huge. think Minnetonka has the number one team mm -hmm. in the state. A great opportunity for kids who don't oh. get to go fishing otherwise. Yeah. Maybe they don't have parents that have boats. Mandy, do you work with the, have you worked with the Brainerd team at all? I've worked with them a little bit. I actually mentor a couple of the kids. So on a regular series, I've had Will, now this is his fifth year with me, so I've had him since he was actually smaller than me. Now I have to look up to him, but uh, which, it, which is nice. And I've helped him more on the sponsorship side. When we were first getting going, I worked with 13, which was one of my sponsors, to help sponsor the team to be able to get the kids r good quality rods at a price that everybody could afford. And that's, I think, the great thing about that is there is a sponsorship. I know there's more than one organization that they belong to. Bass is one, but yeah. not the only organization. And these kids get opportunities to get tackled that they maybe couldn't afford to have otherwise. Um, they learn techniques. They go to different lakes. And I think almost every weekend during the course of the season, they can be in a tournament if they want to be, can't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. That's just a great program. And I think there's a number of women in the Brainerd program, or, or girls, I should say, high school girls. Uh, that's just a, that's a great thing to see. Yeah. And, um, and they also started this year, it was called the Heart of the Lakes Fishing Tournament, um, where it was like different sections of the Tri-County Cooperative in the western section of Minnesota, where it was actually four different groups of schools got together one night um, during the month, and they all fished against each other. For so. people in your area, is there a way that they could get a hold of Anyone in the program? Do um, they have oh, a website absolutely. down there? or I, I know <clears throat> they have a Facebook page. I'm not sure if they have a website yet. 
Um, but they could get you through uh, your absolutely, Facebook page yep, or the Alexandria coaches or um, Fergus Falls, Detroit Lakes. Because I, and and I know it's growing. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more people are getting involved. Even if it's a, I think I talked to some coaches at the Northwest Sports Show. There were only four or five kids in the mm -hmm. in the first program, but it's a start. It's a way to start getting mm -hmm. kids going there. You know, and not all kids are athletes. Right. And that's something too. You know, where I see a lot of kids coming into Glenwood to to fish um, on our high school team. That you know, they're not the star athlete. Yep. And and this isn't out for them. This is something they can that's, do and they can excel at it. How about the Wounded Warriors and the Veterans Programs. You've both been active in that, I know. Talk, talk a little bit about what you do there, both of you. Well, I'm on the board for Fishing with Vets, so we do a lot with veterans and taking them on trips. We have, I think, at least five trips every during the summer that we take them on. Now we've started doing some ice fishing trips and just to get the veterans out on the water, give them the opportunity just to relax, have fun, just kind of let go and not have all the other pressures in the world that are, are bothering them. Are there any special requirements? Do they have to be veterans of an era or anything? No. Nope. Just if I've, they're a military veteran? Yep. I've been honored now to fish with a, a gentleman named Dale for twice now. He's a 91-year-old World War II veteran. Wow. Uh, great, super guy, great guy. So this is. And are you multi-species fishing when you do with, yes. with those guys? Well, it depends. Sometimes we're just walleye, sometimes it's multi-species. How about you, Mandy? You've, you've done some work with that, that, those groups too, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I like the, I do the one at Camp Ripley, and that's a really awesome one. There's a lot of vets that mm -hmm. come for that, and it is, every year I look forward to it, because you just, I've had some special requests where I, the same guys want, you know, to get the same guide over and over again, and the last guys that I had, I had two of them, and they were just a hoot, and I had them in my bass boat, and it was a little bit rough, and we were out on Mille Lacs, <laughs> and they're like, we want to go for a boat ride, and I'm like, I'm looking at these, and they're both in there, you know, one's 70 and one's 80, and I'm thinking, okay, we'll, we'll go for a little boat ride, you know, so I, I put it down and go into our fishing spot. And, uh, and how fast did your boat go? Oh, we might have been doing mid-60s. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the speed limit is. <laughs> so we, we get there, and I get everything set up, and uh, I, th I had a really good, actually, smallmouth spot going for big smallies, and we sat on for 15 minutes, and it was as fast as we could catch them, and they both looked at me, all right, let's go walleye fishing, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, that's cool, and we picked up and went over to the other side of the lake and, and walleye fish, but just listening to those guys tell those stories mm -hmm. is truly amazing. Now, you both do other things besides fishing. What are Mandy? You just got through with an exciting hunt. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm not uh, tournament angling, I do like to ice fish and I do hunt. Um, I actually, after ten years of chasing the big black bear, uh, <laughs> I finally got I ahead. finally got my black bear. So, <laughs> but it's just one of those things. The outdoors, uh, it doesn't matter if it's fishing. Well, just or... talk about that bear. That was just a week ago or so. Correct. And uh, tell us a little bit about how that happened. Um, I've been baiting obviously since you can, it started and baits were getting hit right away and then nothing. And acorns are dropping, weather's warm. Um, and so I stopped baiting, went to Canada for my tournament, came home, the weather snapped, you know, we got that cold snap and started baiting, put the cameras back out and bear started hitting it. And I had two of them, both big ones. So I let the bait sit and I didn't refill them the night before. And then I, I baited it in the morning and I sat all day long and at four o'clock, Came out, perfect heart shot, dropped him right there. It was a boar, wasn't it? Yeah, a big yeah. male. How yeah. much did it weigh? I don't know. Oh. It was. It, it broke the scale <laughs> at camp, so. <laughs> it was wow, it's a beautiful a big, animal. Yeah. I don't know if you sent a picture yeah. of that in for our discussion today I or think not. it did. Uh, yeah, so it's a nice animal. Do you bear hunt or deer hunt? I know you. Deer, everybody in the Kemp family deer hunts, right? Don't they? <laughs> yeah, I went bear hunting <laughs> once, um, and then after I seen it all skinned out, I decided that maybe bear hunting's not quite my thing, so um, haven't went since. But yes, enjoy deer hunting, duck hunting, goose hunting, pheasant hunting. Enjoy it all. And you both do that. You Correct. both do all of those hunting. Yeah. Ice fishing. When do you work? Fishing. When do you guys work? Everybody says that. When do you work? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel that, like I that's work the there. amazing thing about both of you is that because you are truly a woman of the outdoors. You are outdoor enthusiast, and you are good at what you do. And if people wanted to learn how to do some of the things that you do, obviously you're so busy, you don't have time to spend a lot of time with a lot of people. Um, how else could they learn how to get into the, doing some of these things besides the program you talked about? Is there any other way any, that you would recommend if there are, are women watching today that would like to learn how to go deer hunting or 
they don't maybe hunt, have guys they hunt with, how would they get started? How, what would you recommend? Well, I know there's a big group of women that do a lot of fishing stuff together. Um, women, women anglers of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, they are huge into fishing and they're kind of trying to expand in a different variety of things. But I mean, if you want to get involved in fishing, that's a great place to start is to become a member of that. Hunting, is there anything hunting? When, when you uh, served as a guide down in um, Starbuck, um, do they do any training programs there or um, little falls at the, at the hunting range? No. Mostly you got to know what you're doing when you walk into those places, don't you? Correct. Yeah. Yep. You got to go to the bow program. They yep. teach it all. Yep. Oh, it's so amazing. that really is the foundation it, for people. Yep. And I would guess if there were uh, more and more people signing up, they would probably find they would, I don't know if they'd find two more like you two. <laughs> there aren't two more like we you two. We actually have really good archery instructors and turkey instructors, women instructors for the bow program that okay. do do that are, that are phenomenal. Great. So, Nancy, tell us how people can get a hold of you. Um, you can get a hold of me on my Facebook pages um, under Nancy Kep or our and website. It's K-O-E-P for Correct. people that don't know how to spell yep, Kep. And it's actually under Nancy Ann Kep. <laughs> I don't know how I got that on there, but... Um, otherwise, I have a web page for my store, which is kepsbait.com. You can go on there and send an email to me, and I can answer any questions for you. Mandy, how do we how do we get a hold of you? Look me up on Facebook, Instagram. Find me on my website. Uh, just drop me an email. And it's U R U H U H R I C H. Correct. Uric. Yes. And uh, Mandy has a very professional-looking web page. Um, done by some very good photographers, right? <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, it, I've been very, very lucky. <laughs> it's very, very well done. Well, thank you both for appearing on the show, and I think you're to both be to be commended for the tremendous amount of volunteerism that you do. Um, it's you're really mentors to a lot of ladies, and I hope they continue to take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bet. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.